Thank you to the foundation, uh, and especially Althea, uh, for having me and taking a risk on this talk. It's uh, the first time, I believe, that VC is being talked about at, at any DevCon, so it's very exciting. Uh, my name is Jahan Chu, and this topic comes out of conversation uh, that I've been having with some of the largest institutional holders uh, of Ethereum, who are also diehard Ethereum bulls. And we felt frustrated a little bit, um, not so much by the current state of Ethereum, because we're all relatively patient long-term investors with you know, long time horizons to invest, but there's a disconnect, uh, a powerlessness and a disconnect uh, on how we as institutional investors uh, can help make a difference uh, in the layer one Ethereum ecosystem, not just the startups that are building on top. So something doesn't fit between traditional VC and decentralization. It used to be that VC was really straightforward. You would find a bunch of interesting early stage companies, you make sure that the founders are good, you write a check, you help them grow, and then you wait for an exit opportunity. And that's how it was for decades. But this model is not only obsolete, um, as seen by recent failures of Uber and WeWork to really kind of perform in the public markets, but it also obviously doesn't really fit a decentralized project like Ethereum. So we can kind of agree that the old model of venture capital needs an update to fit the decentralized age. So add that uh, to the rise of, you know, obviously crowdfunded uh, applications like Ethereum, and it becomes even harder as an investor to process all this. So as an investor, how do I invest in a company that has no CEO, that doesn't report revenue, much less uh, have revenues? And how do I price the risk of an asset that, you know, swings 15% on, on the back of a tweet? How do I help the project grow when I'm not even sure who they are? Is it the foundation? Is it the devs? Is it the dApps? Is it the ever-present but kind of fluid community? And how should I as an investor feel about a community who isn't really sure how they feel about me and my role as an investor and seems to keep a healthy distance uh, from the investors at best and maybe is you know, a little suspicious and skeptical of our agendas at worst? So there's a disconnect between uh, what, you know, there's a disconnect and I think that the Ethereum community as a whole is really missing an opportunity as a result. And I want to be clear about what the opportunity is for connecting the VCs to the community better. It's that, it's the fulfillment of the promise of Ethereum, of the potential of Ethereum. And obviously this can't be done by VCs alone, but I believe with a more open dialogue between the traditional Ethereum community and the investor community, we can all really help grow the ecosystem together in ways that are not really being currently addressed. So who am I to say all these things? Um, I, first and foremost, I am the founder of the Ethereum meetup in Hong Kong. So we started in March of 2014. Uh, was our first meetup. We had five people uh, in a smoky bar, uh, and we had uh, Stefan Toole, uh, who was Skyping in to tell us about Ethereum. Since then, I've done over 80 meetups, uh, and I've hosted Vitalik uh, seven or eight times in Hong Kong. Uh, and I'm also the founder of Kinetic, which is a VC. We've invested in over 50 Ethereum-based projects along the way, uh, and I personally invested in the crowd some myself. I co-hosted the first Ethereum super meetup in Hong Kong with Sean Jia from Digix and ETH Singapore, which drew well over 1,500 people. Uh, and I did the first NFT conference in 2018 with Ari from Decentraland called Nifty. So I'm an early investor. And one last thing I'll mention uh, is that I have a small foundation which is dedicated to blockchain for social impact called Social Alpha. Uh, and as a Kaufman Fellow, I think a lot about VC and venture capital uh, and how we can better serve the founders. So I think the backdrop of some of where this comes from is this idea and this feeling that Ethereum is somehow under fire. It's become the whipping boy of blockchain in some ways with people focusing too much on what Ethereum can't do rather than all the things that it can do. There's continuous complaints about the scalability issue, even though we know that there are solutions that do exist and are making traction. There's frustration around the long wait time for ETH2. Uh, and then on the external side, you have companies uh, and projects that have you know, multi-billion dollar bankrolls 
who are challenging uh, for the protocol space and waging a really increasing war to attract and retain developer talent. And that's putting pressure on Ethereum. In addition, one of the founders of one of the largest Ethereum owning projects that I know, he described a, a fatigue in Ethereum that's happening right now. Uh, and I can think we can, we can almost even witness it here. There's not as many people here as there used to be. There's not as much buzz around it. But this is not a permanent condition for us. We know as people in the Ethereum community that this is a natural growing pain. We're growing and it's painful, but it's growth. And more importantly, we know that these problems are more of a issue of perception rather than reality. The issue is not just that the, you know, people are believing the wrong things, it's that there's a gap in mainstream communication and messaging. So people who are outside of the ecosystem don't really know who to listen to. They don't know what to believe because they're not in it every day like the way that we are and can't separate fact from, rea uh, fact from, from fiction. I guess to sum it up, there is a feeling that there's a gap between uh, there's a gap in the number of influential mainstream voices who are consistently and vocally articulating the strength of Ethereum. If you think about it, who are the biggest bulls in the Ethereum ecosystem? Uh, sorry, in the, in, in the mainstream. So aside from Vitalik and the foundation, all the great work that they're doing, obviously Joe Lubin is out there is doing great work as well. Who are the other key external people that you can think of off the top of your head in the mainstream who are really talking about Ethereum consistently? Who are really educating the public uh, and educating other influencers because it's in their direct interest to do so? How many can you really name? I had trouble thinking about too many of them. Now, part of this is that this is a feature, not a bug. This is how the foundation, in my mind, wants to be positioned which is fine because it's a decentralized governance system, it's a decentralized organization, uh, and they don't want to be too influential in certain ways. But there is a cost and consequence to this, and it's the void of uh, kind of messaging and support by mainstream influencers that is filled by FUD and complaint and doubt. And there are many ways that VCs, I think, can help, and that's what we do in our daily life. But in my mind, this is one of the most immediate and influential roles that VCs can turn on immediately to help grow Ethereum. So that leads us to why. Why do we want to help as VCs? And it leads us to the incentives and alignments of VCs who have significant investments in Ether and the ecosystem projects. How can the community understand and evaluate our incentives for choosing and boosting Ethereum signal? Well, first, Vitalik was talking about economic incentives. Let's just address those. Obviously, we as VCs who are invested long-term in Ethereum have a financial, a direct financial interest in the price of ETH. And many funds that I know have put 10% of their fund in Ethereum. Now, I don't know how much you know about VC math, but a lot of these funds are depending on their investment in Ethereum to go, go up many, many multiples in order to return uh, the fund itself. That's just VC math. It means that they're really depending on ETH to grow long-term. But most large crypto VCs who hold Ethereum are not really speculating on the price only. They're investors with long-term investment horizons, and they're investing in the technology and the ecosystem like traditional VCs, and they have five to 10-year investment horizons. And I really want you to understand that because there's a sense perhaps that I've heard where people think that VCs are just flipping coins. Some of them are, that's fair, but many are not, and the earliest ones are not. Yes, there are trading funds, but they're different than VCs. And Second, I think that many of us who have invested significant portions of our portfolios uh, in the equity of companies uh, are based in Ethereum. And again, these are five to 10 year investment horizons that we're trying to grow companies' equity on Ethereum. If Ethereum doesn't work, if it doesn't scale, if it doesn't grow its user base, a large portion of our portfolios will starve to death. And then we as VCs will starve to death too. Third, I think that Ethereum is in many ways a proxy for the health of decentralized technology generally. Ethereum is almost synonymous for blockchain technology. And whenever someone says that Ethereum doesn't scale, it's an indictment of the entire industry because Ethereum is the largest and most holistically developed public blockchain. It's really bad for business for people to be you know, continuing this FUD. So I think we've established that the financial alignment of VCs and why we want to help grow the ecosystem, not just the companies on top, is clear. We need Ethereum price and especially utility 
and the companies on top to grow so that we can make money and drive returns for our investors. That's the financial side. Now, if you're a dev or a founder, maybe you're thinking, okay, well, that's basically what I thought. Uh, VCs just want to make money, cool. Uh, well, yes and no. Yes, we want to make money, but no, that's not all we want. It's actually this fourth reason that I think is the most important and why most of us are in it. In reality, the financial side of VC is not why most of us got into investing. In reality, the much more powerful incentive and alignment is that we really love and believe in Ethereum. Our passion and belief in Ethereum is the most reliable indicator of our long-term investment in the space. Many of us who are the long-term holders were there at the beginning. I did a short survey of some of my friends who are long-term holders, and 75% of them were invested within the first year of Ethereum, between 2014 and 2015. Now, we believe in the idea of decentralization. We admire the developers in the Ethereum community building the platform, and most importantly, we respect the tone and tenor of the community. It is the most single differentiating factor of Ethereum in my mind. And we remember how far we've come from the start, just like you, when you know, the financial opportunity was non-existent, really kind of uncertain, the path was uncertain, and the risk of failure far greater. And this is why we get that it's different than 99% of the other protocols and better than 99% of the other protocols. It's the community that's been built. For many of us, Ethereum is the purest form of expression of blockchain and the ideas of community and decentralization that attracted us to the space in the first place. We chose to invest in this industry. It didn't choose us. And that's what I really want you to understand about some of us VCs who are long and, and large in, in Ethereum. If you're a die-hard decentralist, die -hard decentralist, maybe you're thinking, well, VCs are part of the problem because we concentrate capital, uh, because we're exclusive, uh, and because we wield outsized influence, uh, which bulldozes the field of decentralization. And you're not wrong. We do concentrate capital. We are exclusive, and we do wield influence. But the point of this talk is to suggest that maybe that's not the end of the story. Maybe there's more that unites us than divides us. Our common ground is the belief in the project and the mission, and maybe it's time we can harness our influence for the common good. I think Ethereum has come a long way. The foundation, the devs, consensus, the EEA have done an incredible amount to carry the load this far. But I think the question for now is, what can VCs do for our part to ensure that Ethereum can really go the distance and to really help Ethereum succeed? So I think in, in considering VCs, we can th suggest that we're just another node in the network. Um, I think it's best to think of uh, VCs not as a class outside of the Ethereum ecosystem, but more like just another node in the network. Just like there are minor nodes, there are business nodes, there are developer nodes, there are other types of community nodes who focus on different areas uh, of developing Ethereum, VCs are a particular community and we have particular needs and particular skill sets and contributions. VCs in particular don't like to sit back and let other people do the work. We like to add value to our investments. It's how we are evaluated for our work, how much we make, and how much value we add. So we can't just sit back and let someone else handle it. We have to mingle, we have to meddle, we have to get in there and, and try to help make things better. We can't help ourselves, it's like a sickness, it's like venture capitalitis. We don't know any better than to try to help. We're not always helpful, but we want to be helpful. We, we try to be. So how does an old school traditional VC typically help a project? Obviously through funding, helping to raise other funding. Uh, we introduce founders to business development, uh, develop strategy, we do board of directors, financial roadmaps and recruiting and resource planning, risk management, crisis management, uh, and obviously we're the main investor for, for many of the companies that are building on top. Um, and I think addition, uh, two things that are specifically relevant to Ethereum because of its decentralized nature are helping to engage and attract enterprise uh, customers and growth. And two, influencing. I think enterprise uh, has great support from EEA, but it can't, have, can't hurt to help and have more firepower. I want to touch on this point of influencing because it's really key for VCs. I know it sounds a bit fluffy, but influencing influencers is an important leverage that VCs have as investors. For example, back in 2015, I was doing one-on-one -on -one meetings with Vitalik and CEOs in the Hong Kong community, CEOs of banks, to educate and normalize the narrative of blockchain for them. It was the first time they'd heard of blockchain. And 
continue to today, hypothetically, if there was a gathering in China of some of the mul biggest multi-billionaire internet founders who are just starting to look at blockchain and are enamored of certain Chinese-dominated DPoS blockchains, or worse, think that they can better roll their own solution, and I can ask Vitalik or other people in the foundation to come and make a pitch and form a contact bond so that when they build their blockchain solutions for their billions of users, Ethereum is at least in the conversation. Then isn't that worth it? Isn't that worth the effort? And as VCs, we may not be able to build applications, but we're pretty good at building stories and building relationships. So if VCs can do all this, then why aren't we doing it? Well, it's because we work in a certain way uh, and when we back a startup, we're typically backing a founder, leading a company, building things and driving revenue that can typically uh, be sold. So Ethereum is really hard to help because there is no one founder to talk to or help. Uh, but this is by design. Again, this is a feature, not a bug. The foundation doesn't want to be in the position, as I understand, of blessing specific investment agendas or efforts, much less telling us what to do or not do. As I understand it, they're here to shepherd and uh, various self-guided efforts uh, if they deem it aligned with the aims of the foundation. So the question here is, is there a way for VCs to uh, make use uh, of their resources without compromising the spirit of decentralized governance that is core to its birth? One idea, which is a really simple one, would be to self-organize and to start doing um, calls or meetings to discuss how we can help and how we can prioritize things that we think the ecosystem needs. And it's important to note that many other top-level protocols, uh, which are great in their own rights, are also already have VC backing. They came after Ethereum, so they didn't have to deal with the same type of issue of not having formal backing. Now, I don't have the perfect answer here, but the point I'm trying to make is that perhaps there's a middle ground. If we talk openly about what we both want and can contribute, then I believe VCs and investors can harness a great deal of the pent-up energy and experience for the common good. We just need to work together on the solution. So, going further, how can we improve venture capital in the age of decentralization? Well, there's no question that the traditional model of venture capital is tried uh, and has been honed to address some of the most fundamental issues in growing a company. Um, and it's been effective in growing the companies that we know and love, but it's worth asking the question, has decentralization changed the game? Perhaps we're not only helping to grow companies anymore, Instead, we're helping to grow the communities that grow the platforms that grow the companies. And if that's the case, maybe we need a new approach. The new VC is not just a financier, we're a node. We can't just invest, we need to participate. If I had to sum it up in a simple idea, it would be don't just allocate, participate. Specifically, participation in this new type of VC realm can mean a host of things. And it's really important to note that many great funds are already doing these things. Firms like Pantera and Fundbushi and Polychain and Hash and Multicoin and Andreessen Libertas, and Libertis and even us at, at Kinekinek, we're already doing some of these things. We need to run nodes. Adding nodes to the network is a very basic function and a fundamental role that we can play. Staking, of course, we can um, add value to the network and add security to the network community calls, actually participating in the conversation around where the function goes and where the platform goes is important. Obviously, participating in governance. We can't just talk about it, we have to be about it. We need to continue educating and evangelizing and help to create and enforce a narrative around Ethereum that goes beyond just the foundation, just the technology. Storytelling is really important in our space and it's important, I think, particularly important for Ethereum. And I think we can do that on behalf. And then finally, enterprise growth, I think, is quite important. Uh, and I think that uh, we can add a bit of firepower to that uh, and raw user growth. Maybe what we should be asking at the end of each quarter is not, why isn't the foundation doing more to increase user growth? And instead ask, how many companies did I introduce to Ethereum and how many users did they bring on? And in the spirit of the community and to address the exclusivity issue, Maybe we as venture capitalists shouldn't do this from the perch of being an investor. Maybe we should be doing it, you know, not as an exclusive access to an exclusive club, investing in an exclusive round, but really from the ground level, at the same level as the community. And if we go into that area, maybe we can think of ourselves, you know, maybe we don't need to be just venture capitalists. Maybe we can be nodes. Maybe we can be venture nodes. 
And step by step, we can slowly but steadily facilitate a more open and distributed investment framework for this new age of decentralization. And I think if we kind of travel along this path and think about it more, maybe we can become a better version of ourselves. And who knows? Maybe we can just fix the broken model of venture capital along the way. Wouldn't that be nice? So what's next? What do we want from the community or the foundation? Um, to be honest, we don't really want anything um, other than for them to know that there are people out there like us who are thinking this way, and if they think that this is helpful, if you think this is helpful, engage us. We need to grow this through dialogue. From the Ethereum community, again, we don't necessarily want anything specific either other than an openness to meet us halfway and engage in the dialogue and get suggestions and support and feedback. There's always been a distance between the Ethereum and VCs, and maybe we can bridge that gap a little bit and breathe some life into this idea. To be honest, I think this is much more a call to action for the investor community to self-organize and perhaps give some shape to the things that we think about and kind of put into action. Uh, and so if you're an investor and want to participate, hit me up. Thank you very much. <laughs>